Hello, welcome to the video. So we're back with the uh, 60 clone that I assembled recently and uh, it's got a Vic 2 Kawari on board. Now I've been out this morning and added a small jumper, I don't know if we can see that there. And what that does is it switches it between PAL and NTSC. And the reason for that is I'm going to highlight some of the differences between PAL and NTSC in some games today. Um, it might seem a little bit like it should work on both machines but the 64 has got some really strange stuff going on um, one of the good features with a Vic chip is it can actually set an interrupt at a specific scan line now the problem with that is um, some coders use that as a timing mechanism so some of the uh, NTSC stuff breaks because it's obviously got a different amount of scan lines than uh, the, the PAL version so you get all sorts of weird glitches and stuff like that happening. So uh, I'm just going to get it set up on a tripod and then uh, we're going to get into it. Right, so here we are again. We're all set up and as you can see, 60 hertz, 720 before 80. And that's NTSC mode. The differences in games are not just down to the raster interrupts. You've also got the frames per second. You've got 20% difference. You're going from 50 hertz to 60 hertz. You've also got a different clock speed as well. So you will I think from memory, the 64 runs at 0.98 megahertz for PAL and 1.01 for NTSC. It's not always the raster interrupt that breaks the game. You know, some, some of them can be the differences in the timing. If, if they've done, it depends on the coder. Um, so what we're gonna look at today is we're gonna fire up the Kung Fu Flash and we're going to uh, look at a one load 64 collection or a couple of games on it. Um, cheers, Ben. Um, and we're going to see just how some of them break. Now, it's worth noting that it's not the one load collection's fault that some of them are broken. It's the actual coding of the game. Some of, them can, uh, some of the games can be found online um, with fixes for NTSC. Um, a Whizball was one that comes to mind. I'm sure that's been fixed. Um, not on the collection, but somewhere online. You should be able to get an NTSC copy of it. So we're going to power this up straight away. And uh, I've already got Delta loaded on the cartridge. So let's fire this up. There we go. There we go. 724, 80, 60 hertz. Don't know what happened there. Hmm, bad connection or something. Anyway, so that's now started up. Um, you can notice here, because of the, the difference in frame size, some of the text is on the edge of the border. The music's running faster. You can also notice there's a, a few glitches on some of the text. Now I'm going to use my wonderful homemade joystick. I apologise for the clickiness, it's got an arcade stick in it. But the game itself seems to play okay. And you notice that the icons on the bottom of the screen, they're uh, half gone. The, the top as well, there's something going on there. It's not right either. But it, it's scrolling smoothly. I'm not even trying to play this, it's just demonstrating the scrolling. Um, so that's really the only glitch to it. You could still play it, but yeah, it's just got a few little artifacts. Here we go, we've got some background now. But that all seems to be okay. Oh, no, now we've got some glitching. And this is one of the classic things you'll see with the NTSC games. You'll get some distorted graphics. That's the, that's the main failure mode. That's what I'm getting at. So um, let's uh, jump back into the menu. Let's find another one. Now, um, Drop Zone. <coughs> it's a very good Defender type game. Um, yeah. What you'll see here is, let's fire it up. You see how that bounced on the screen and then glitched out and it's completely frozen. Absolutely dead. 
Now, if we switch this back into PAL, and I can do that just by pulling the NTSC jumper on the Kawari, and then switch it on, it'll boot back into the same game. And look how smooth that scrolls now, and then starts up. So drop zone completely, yeah, it doesn't work at all. Let's put it back into NTSC. Start it up. You watch the word come on the screen. Look, bing, flies on and then locks up. Let's try another one. Now, some, there's some, some games will glitch and some will completely freeze. This is another one. Enigma Force. Superb game. Look at that. Let's try it in PAL. This is not the Kawari, this will happen on real uh, PAL NTSC hardware. Straight in. It's the same cartridge. It, yeah. So it's completely locked up. And uh, there's some others as well. Most new releases are, are much better. Uh, it's the contemporary stuff that's a problem. So let's just, uh, let's try um, gyroscope. Now this is another um, example, it's a game I liked back in the day. This is an example of a game that is still playable, but it's a bit glitchy. So, here we go. Now I just hope this is coming out okay on the camera because you're going to see some glitches as it scrolls. And you'll have to excuse the dodgy playing. I'm not all that good at these games. I like them, but I'm just not very, very good at playing them. But you can see as the screen's scrolling downwards, it, it's glitching out at the bottom. Go. And as it's coming on the screen, there's this like momentary glitching going on. Yeah. So it's usually on this game, it's the uh, vertical scroll. So hopefully you can see that okay. All right. But it's still playable. This one, <laughs> you can like this. Um, this is another uh, big name game, IK Plus. So it starts up okay. Nah, <laughs> you're definitely going to see this on the camera. There must have been some sort of programming tricks made here that uses the screen because. Clearly that is absolutely fucked. The game's still running. It's just... <laughs> yeah, well you can see. Alright, let's try another one. Now Kettle, um, was a game I liked. That, um, that just locks up completely. Now I did a video, uh, a couple of videos ago, about a game called Kilowatt, which is one of the games I liked when I was a kid. Um, check this out. Now you'll see it plays, but you'll see that there's this weird glitch on the scrolling. You see that? So the game still plays okay. It just, it just glitches as it scrolls. And it should be buttery smooth. But you should be able to see it's like shimmering, especially down the middle of the screen. So I'll go left one more time and you can see it. Can you see it here? It's all glitching across this part here and the words. And it should be just super smooth. Okay, let's, uh, let's fire up another one. Uh, Pac-Mania. Now, this is a bit of a weird one. Um, it seems to play mostly okay, but again, as soon as it starts scrolling, it uh, loses its crumpets. <clears throat> I 
here we go yeah you, you can see it's just I mean it's a superb version of this how they've done this on 64 I don't know but you can see it's glitching out yeah let's have a go at another one right Everyone knows this next game, Light Force. Again, you can hear the music is uh, running much, much faster than normal. The game itself is running okay, but the score line is, uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's glitching a bit on the screen as well. You can see these little jumps, like a blue planet in the background there. Like little hiccups it is. Now, believe it or not, it probably makes the game a little more playable having it a bit quicker, because it's far too easy in PAL mode anyway. Right. So, that was Light Force. Again, it's, it's usually centred around a complete lock-up or something to do with the scrolling. Um, let's have a look at Nebulous. I'm going down the wrong way to list. Right. There we go. There. Here we are. And we can instantly see the, the glitching on the top of the screen. I really am useless at this game. So you can see these odd glitches that do some really, really funky stuff. Yeah, still mostly playable, but you know, if you've got an NTS machine, it's going to piss you off. Now, another big name game was Sanction, or Sanction, or however you want to pronounce it. Forerunner of Delta. Well, you can see, as soon as that moves, it's flashing its tits off. Don't know if the camera's picking that up, but it's, yeah. So, here we go. Something's not quite right here. That looks okay. Oh, my God. And it's just lost its crumpets. It's still playing, but... Obviously, something to do with the timing is based on the screen, so, yeah. Glitch City. Now, uh, Wizardry. There's another game I liked as, as a kid. Um, yeah. That, that has a, a, a glitch in it that only affects the lower half of the screen. As you can see, that's just jumping everywhere until you move. And it settles down a bit. And you stop and it goes again. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. So. Let's, uh, let's stop that now. But there are other games that are okay. And uh, Activision ones are usually pretty good. Um, Frankie Goes to Hollywood's all right. Um, a weird one was one of my favourites. And that's uh, PSI Warrior. 
and I, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick this up or not but I'll try and show you when I was doing the testing I found this out right now on PAL this is absolutely buttery smooth and that looks okay that's no problem That still looks okay. Once you go a bit faster, you get this weird jitter. Like it's missing a frame every now and again. It's just not there. But that's just nitpicking. I mean, this game is perfectly playable. Rambo, that works fine. So the the big games that were released uh, internationally, they, they seem to work okay. And like I said, all the Activision games are well, they they just they just work. Um, let's have a look at uh, what's an Activision game? Pitfall, yeah, Pitfall. Oh, Ghostbusters. Or maybe not. No, I hadn't tried this one earlier. But it doesn't seem to like it. Let's put it into PAL. Well, that might be a uh, dodgy copy on this collection then. Oh, how about that? Put it back into NTSC. Let's try a different one. Let's try a River Raid. I've oh, just gone past Pitfall. Typical, it is a port one game. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yep, no problem at all. I don't know what's the matter with Ghostbusters, that didn't like to load. But, yeah, so, what I'm saying is that um, some of the NTSC games, uh, uh, PAL games, don't work very well on NTSC systems. And I'm just highlighting that fact. And, yeah, you should be able to find fixed games out there. C uh, CSDB, you'll probably have some for some of them. Uh, like I said earlier, I know Wizball definitely has a fixed version out there. Some of the cracking groups are uh, fixed games as well. But there are some that just won't work properly. And that's the reason for it. If you pick a new game, um, a relatively new one was Fix It Felix. And I think that's on this collection. It says, let's... Uh, There it is. Right. Now. Yeah. Wrong button, mate. Right. Uh, there. Gonna wreck it. Gonna wreck it. Well, we're gonna wreck it if we can get it in the right joystick port. Okay. All right, let's wreck it. So as you can see, there's no there's no real glitch in there. It's 
it's all super smooth here we go well that's interesting I didn't expect that That's um, that's froze up completely. It's gone. Okay. Let's uh, let's see if it does that in PAL. Right, so let's see if that crashes again. And there you go, it didn't like that either. <laughs> I guess that's just a uh, dodgy game. But other stuff like uh, Easy Flash releases and stuff like that, they tend to work okay, uh, the ones I've tried. It's basically uh, some of the contemporary stuff is a bit wonky, but yeah, so it's just a little video just to show the differences between PAL and NTSC. Um, yeah, so check out 8-Bit Retro Refix and uh, thanks for watching.